Good afternoon, class. My name is Gonzalo Torres, and I'm here to present to you today one of the seven wonders of the world, the Great Pyramids of Egypt. There are eight. There are around 80 pyramids in Egypt. One of the one of the most recognized and most known are the ones at Giza, next to the Sphinx. Actually, the first pharaoh that built the first pyramid was his name was the Djoser. The Djoser was the pharaoh during the period known as the Third Dynasty. Although the one that actually made the design for the construction of the pyramid was the architect named Imhotep, who was also the chancellor of the Djoser and also the high priestess of the sun god Ra. The Djoser's pyramid were actually not, not pyramidly shaped. They were, they were built on bastaves, on mastaves, which are burial grounds for Egyptians. They had, he had around six of them stacked up one one smaller than the previous one before in order to make it more like a pyramid but it was actually just a bunch of blocks put together that that had nothing to do like a, to a pyramid shape in this picture you can see the six builds that there is in the pyramid these each individual build is what there is called a mastabe the mastabes were stacked up one one smaller than the previous one before in order to make it more like a pyramid but it was actually just a bunch of blocks put together that that had nothing to do like a, to a pyramid shape uh, actually pyramids were built by not as commonly thought but by Egyptians themselves not slaves they these Egyptians were the ones that built the pyramids because there was a three month period in which the rain did not come to Egypt so the harvest for the for the farming was not very good so what people did was that in order to gain money and the food and everything they used to go to the pyramids and work there for for everything that they needed them they were not actually treated uh, they were giving everything that they needed, but the thing is, in my opinion, if you have to carry a 2.5 ton brick, then you're treated, you're being a little bit treated like a slave. In this picture, you can see how the pyramids were built and how the blocks were carried all the way to the top of the pyramid by using only the labor force of the Egyptians. The reasons why these pyramids were built was so that the bodies of the pharaohs would be preserved for a long time. They, they, these, they needed to be preserved in order to be recognizable for the afterlife because according to common folk, they were gods and they, and they were going to a natural life in which they needed their body. Also, that's why they were built in, that's, the, that's why they were put in these huge tombs because they needed, because they needed to be protected from everything else so that their body would be perfect when they reach the afterlife. That's why also they put the thing, some artifacts inside the tombs with them so that they could carry these artifacts into the afterlife and in any case that they needed one of the artifacts they would just use it. In this picture you can see how the mummies are very well preserved after a long time and also the kind of tombs that they were put in so that they could be protective of, of any people that came into the pyramid. Uh, after the Djoser, there was uh, his son comes Seneferu. Seneferu was the first pharaoh that actually created the, the pyramids that we, that we see today. Seneferu had three pyramids. Uh, the first one was called Meidum. The Meidum pyramid was actually almost the same as the Djoser's, although the Meidum failed horribly. It was constructed with poor materials, so it, as soon as it went up, it collapsed, and it was all made into rubble. So, in, so instead of that, he went into another type of pyramid. This one is called the Ben Pyramid, and that is because this was the first pyramid that actually looks like the ones that we see today, like with all the pyramids shaped and everything, but the thing is that his uh, had a little miscalculation. The angle of elevation of when it first started was was a bit wrong. It had a taller ang like a bigger angle of elevation, so the pyramid would be even bigger. But the thing is, 
that the architects, once they were halfway, they saw that it may collapse. So what they did was they stopped construction immediately, and instead they changed the angle of, of elevation in the at halfway point and made it look smaller. That is why in, in some of the sides, it looks like it has a bent shape. Then after that came Sneferu's final masterpiece. It's called the Red Pyramid. And that is because this was the one that had the, the perfect angle of elevation and was all was very very neat on the, on its sides it has the red it has the red pyramid name because of the red limestone that he put on on each side of it in this picture we can see the sneferu's three pyramids the one to the left is the Meidum pyramid the one to the in the middle is the bent pyramid and the one to the right is the red pyramid that is covered in red limestone finally after Sneferu comes his son, Khufu. Khufu. Khufu was the pharaoh that created the biggest pyramid and the most majestic one of all time. It's the biggest one in Giza of the three of them that there are there. Although, no, yeah. And then the, these three pyramids that, that were built in Giza was one was from Khufu, the, one, the next one next to Khufu's was his son's, uh, Kafres and the one next to Kafres was his son, was Khufu's grandson, Menkaures. The biggest of them all, of course, was Khufu's pyramid. It's called the Great Pyramid of Giza. The sides are oriented in four cardinal points of the compass, and the length of each side at the base is 755 feet. The faces rise at an angle of 52 degrees approximately, and originally, and original. The original height was 481 feet. Fun fact was that the limestone covered covering the the pyramid of Giza it was very very white. But the thing is, once they construct once the construction of the city of Cairo started, the the limestone of of the pyramid of Giza was used to construct Cairo. Then after well then after Khufu's pyramids come comes Khafre's. Khafre's pyramid was, uh, it seems a bit taller than Khufu's, but the thing is, it was built on higher ground. It actually is 33.5 feet shorter than the Great Pyramid. Then Khufu's grandson, then Khufu's grandson, Megaudis, he had the smallest pyramid of them all in Giza. His pyramid is about less than half than the size of Khufu's pyramid. The big pyramid in the left is Khufu's pyramid, the one in the middle is Khafre's, his sons, and the one to the right is Menkaure's, his grandsons, which is the smallest of them all. Uh, the, actually, the interior of the pyramid is very extraordinary. The, the, king, the pharaoh's chamber is in the middle of the pyramid, and, below, and directly below the, the pharaoh's chamber comes the the wife's pharaoh's chamber. There's only one entrance and one exit on the on the pyramid. Although there's also uh, like four shafts, two that connect to the pharaoh's pyramid, two that connect sorry to the to the pharaoh's chamber, and two that connects to the wife's pharaoh's chamber. In these pictures, we can see the what it looked like inside of the pyramid, the map of it. To the top right, we can see the pharaoh's chamber, and in the bottom right, we can see the wife's pharaoh's chamber. Then after this, we can see, after seeing all these pyramids, we can see how there was a sort of evolution when we see the pyramids. At first, we had the, the Mastavis pyramid, which were these huge blocks and made it nothing look like a pyramid. Then, then after that, we had the bent pyramids which they had all the angle of elevation wrong and it was just practically funny how how they were built like all bent and stuff and finally we have the the final masterpieces like the red pyramid the great pyramid of giza and that kafir's pyramid and mentawa's pyramid sneferu is a perfect example of the three types of the evolution of the pyramids since he built all three the one of Mastavis, then the bent, then the bent pyramid, and then the fully formed pyramid with a perfect angle. What is the meaning of of actually of these pyramids? 
uh, well, in perspective, they all have different meanings. But, for example, the Pyramid of Giza. The Pyramid of Giza, the Pyramid of Giza was, well, since it was set on white limestone on the outer, on the exterior, it was supposed to attract and, and more, it was supposed to attract and ex encapsulate light in the, in the interior making supposedly the the pharaoh turn into the sun god himself although that doesn't seem very very likely in this image we can see still the traces of the white limestone that was still the pyramids um the pyramids of Ge the pyramids of of egypt have this have been have been noted to be one of the seven wonders of the world and that is well in my opinion it is because they it can prove how much society can accomplish if they are found together to achieve one goal. Literally, the pyramids are a show of power of how the pharaohs m were able to construct these humongous these humongous builds just for their own just for their own supposed afterlife. Uh, then it shows how literally amazing this these things are and how the and how the pharaohs were able to to amount this much of power just to just to reach this thank you for watching